Hey, what's going on guys? Still Rain here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Matex 40 channel Smart Audio VTX. And this is the Pyrodrone relabeled version, same thing, just made for uh, Pyrodrone. So we'll go ahead and get started and let you see what it comes with and discuss some of its features. So first of all, the VTX it comes with, of course, and then it comes with a linear dipole antenna to keep you nice and lightweight to an IPEX connector on the back. Also comes with the traditional IPEX to SMA uh, if you want to run a different sort of antenna, like a circular polarized antenna. And a couple strips of heat shrink once you're done soldering everything up. And this is a pretty exciting brand new VTX that's come out in the market within the last month or two. And um, I'll tell you why. is because it's relatively cheap. It's around $30. And um, you could change your channel and power uh, via the Betaflight OSD, which is, is pretty awesome, you know. And what it also features is pretty great. And why I'm going to be switching over from my uh, my other VTXs. Um, currently, I use the uh, the Tramp and the TBS Unify, and this this one right here uh, for the features and price, I think is one of the best buys out there, and and most feature packed. So you'll you'll see down here, it's got two buttons. So you could also you know if you if you don't want to wire up Smart Audio, you could also go ahead and um, got these two buttons here. A is for the selection, so it'll cycle between the the bands. You hit A again and it'll cycle through the channels and you hit it again and you could cycle from 25 watts to 200 milliwatts to 500 milliwatts. Uh, it's, it's pretty awesome, you know. What I also like about this VTX is that it's stackable, so it's got the two holes. It's about half the size of a flight controller. And it just stacks right below or right on top via the holes there, which is pretty cool. Um, it's it doesn't have any of those those the stupid you know little plug-in JST adapters. Everything is is solderable, as you can see. Um, I'll go ahead and get started over here. So you'll see here. Here's the soldering holes, both five volt out, and they're both uh, five volt and rated up to one amp. So that's pretty good. It says you could power your uh, FPV and ca uh, camera or uh, flight controller. If you have a flight controller, it only takes five volts. You have two grounds here. Then you have uh, the transmit pin and the video pin, the receive pin and the audio pin. So we'll go ahead and um, go ahead and get some measurements of this thing uh, while it's out. about 22 millimeters wide Let's see what it is here in length got about 36 millimeters in length and about about say about six and a half tall so it's relatively small we'll go ahead and get a weight of this VTX here with the um, the linear dipole sorry about the lighting if that doesn't show up it's all zeroed out go ahead and see what it's sitting at here seven grams so that's not too bad you know with the uh, with the antenna and everything connected I'm sure the the um, included SMA is about another gram or two uh, just because of the connector at the end but that's no big deal so overall, you know, pretty compact, pretty light uh, VTX. It's a little bit heavier than the uh, than the Unify and Tramp, uh, a little bit bigger, but to me, it's got you know a lot of features, including um, these LEDs, which I'll show you here in a few minutes. Um, it takes seven to twenty-seven volts, which is is pretty pretty wide range. So it'll pretty much go from a two S to a six S lipo. Um, Direct power, as you could, uh, let's see, right up here is the uh, the voltage in, as you could see. Pretty easy to power. Just uh, I'll go ahead and show you that in a minute once I solder up everything and, and show you how to cycle through the push button um, uh, channels and everything. 
All right, guys, I've got everything wired up and working here. I'll go ahead and show you how the push button features work. So you push A, and A will select what you want to change. You see me changing through the bands there. Hit A again. Now you could select the channels. Pretty simple. And same thing with the power. It'll go down there, and you could select 25 milliwatts, 200, or 500. And pretty simple. And um, that's pretty much it for the push buttons. You just hit A again, confirms your selection. And as you can see, pretty pretty simple and easy to deal with the push buttons. And like I said, up, up here, what you'll do is you'll solder on your smart audio to the TX, go into beta flight, and uh, hook up the TX to one of your UARTs on your flight controller. Whatever UART it is, you in beta flight, you just go ahead and... Uh, uh, turn on the feature, uh, I believe it's a Immersion RC um, tramp feature, and everything should be uh, up and going for you. Pretty simple after that, then you can change everything through the Betaflight OSD. Okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up the uh, Smart Audio feature in uh, Betaflight here. So I'll go ahead and plug in my flight controller and connect. And what you'll do is you'll come over here to the Ports tab, and whatever UART you soldered the transmit on the uh, VTX to, I soldered mine to UART 3. So I'll go ahead and go over here to Peripherals. And it's not going to be the TBS Smart Audio. It's going to be the IRC Tramp protocol here. So you go ahead and select that. Save and reboot. Go ahead and reconnect. Go back to ports, make sure everything's saved correctly. And there you go. It's that simple. Um, you know, relatively simple and easy to set up, and not a big deal at all. Uh, now, you, now you're able to change all your uh, parameters inside of Betaflight OSD. Uh, some people prefer Lua Script. Personally, I, I like the um, the OSD feature. It's no biggie to to change and set up anything for me. So, and like I said, this is a pretty awesome VTX. I've been using it now for about two weeks. No issues. Uh, it's very very strong on 25, 200, and 500 milliwatts. So personally, I'm I'm going to be switching my my whole fleet over uh, to these, especially at a price of thirty dollars uh, through PyroFlip RC. So, all right, guys, I'm back. Going to go ahead and see what this thing consumes in power under the uh, under the different modes here. I'll go ahead and plug it in, and right now it's transmitting at uh, 25 milliwatts. You can see it's pulling about 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.112 amps, which is pretty awesome. So I'll go ahead and change it here. Change it up to 200 milliwatts and see what it jumps up to. So now we're jumping up to about between 0 0.20 and 0 0.23 amps. Still respectable, not bad at all. Go ahead and select it again and go up to 500 milliwatts. See how much power this thing consumes at its maximum level. There we go. So it's consuming about 0.3 to point, 0.3 to 0.33 amps. Not too bad considering you know 500 milliwatts uh, max coming out of this thing. So that's going to be it for uh, this review, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned something. Um, if you enjoy the content and would like to see more, uh, please like, subscribe, and share this. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below. Thank you. See you guys.